Okay, guys. My attempt at mixing wall epoxy here, or true metal, sorry, rather. This is this may be a tiny bit messy, but this is real brass. I am not mixing shit. This is actual brass. Sorry, I'll have to do push-ups for that later. I don't cuss. I don't cuss for free, I'll say. I've been trying to stop cussing. I've ended up just doing push-ups a lot. Sometimes if I know my day is going to get stressful, I just try to bang out 100 or so in the morning so I can just cuss through my day at will for the first five or so. That's a joke. I am actually trying to stop, mostly because I have kids and I don't want my little boy to ever cuss. It made me think when I thought, man, what if my little boy cussed? Like, I don't care. But they're all, they're so much more well-spoken than I am. How old are they? How, how old? Really? I just saw my little boy. I have to tell a story, guys. So my little boy's... That my, I saw some a few little cuss words on my son's phone today where he was texting his friends, but it's super sweet because he's in a really small school and his um, in his grade in a split classroom, there's one other kid and that's a really cute little girl. And so they talk, they're like, we're besties or whatever. And they were going back and forth talking about being besties. And it was really cute. And then he says, the other little girl was thinking of going to a different school next year. And so my son was kind of worried about it. And... Um, He's like, man, he's like, I'm going to be lonely next year if you're not here because you're my bestie. He's like, but that's okay. My sister's my other bestie, and she's a baddie. So uh, she's a effing baddie or whatever, like his own sister. And I thought that was really sweet that he, like, n tells other people that his best friend is his sister. He's, like, such a big ki kid and just super quiet. I didn't expect that out of him. So, All right, guys, all right. I know it looks like I'm struggling here, and that's because I'm not used to mixing such small volumes. Get a good mix going down here. Now this is true metal, this is actually brass. I'm gonna, pol I'm gonna be able to polish this onto the countertop, apply it to the countertop, and then um, today and we're going to be doing a bark edge pattern on a live edge wood grain pattern I'm doing. And then we're going to polish it and this will be very, very, very polished brass. Scrape those sides in the bottom there. And I know this is just a little partial batch. Um, I tried to split it pretty darn near in half. So I start out drill usually and mix it. And then I usually try to scrape those sides in the bottom. Um, and then usually I'll just finish with a quick little stick mix. Gina said you don't know how to mix paint. I'd never Damn, Gina, I'm going to stop using your name every time I talk about a hot girl. Because every time I'm like, damn, Gina, she hot. It's always Gina. But from now on, I'm going to call her like Tiffany or something. So, new name. LOL. I love you, Gina. Don't know who you are, but if you, if you came and met me, and this is not paint. This is true metal. It is much different. But if you came and met me, you'd be like, damn, he can mix some motherfucking paint. So, if your mom hires me to mix paint. I don't even paint, so not even a painter. She just has me come over and mix paint with a tool belt on or something. How is everybody? The people I'm not teasing. Is Miss Mary Tits on today? Is Mary Mellons here? There, that is actually a person. We do have Mary Mellons, and Gina and Mary Mellons should get together. Or maybe Gina is Mary Mellons. Gina said, I didn't know it was paint. No, Gina, you're awesome. I'm never too serious or too worried about what anybody says. Because most of the weird crap I do in here is very odd. So I completely understand if somebody doesn't see where we're going with most stuff. So now I'm going to grab my trowels, different application methods. I am very, I can say I've poured a lot of epoxy in my life, but let's just say I've done very little true metal. So I am 
grabbing all my necessary potential tools. And yeah, I'm making a little bit of a mess. And the, the cameraman, the camera woman is very good at catching all my stupidity. Basically, if you follow me, I'm going to be dropping stuff. So here is our wood grain table. And I'll kind of show you. You guys are going to. You girls are, everybody here is about to reach climax in like two seconds when you see me spray this. So wait till you see this. Men out there, take a tip from a pro. If you're ugly and you really don't have a great personality, learn how to do epoxy because you just do this. See how pretty that is? This is epoxy that we wood grained. And all we really did was pour our different colors, and then I scraped it with a scraping tool to create this wood grain effect. I have sanded it, um, so that's why it's all deglossed right now. But trust me. Trust me, Gina. You'd love this place. you got to come to a class, Gina. Can you use this mix on a Formica countertop? Um, yeah, it's actually a it woodwork very well on a Formica countertop. A lot of people do that. That's kind of just make sure you clean your Formica with acetone first or alcohol and really get any of that dirt and oil, especially along the side of your stoves, grease and stuff, cooking fluids and stuff. Cooking fluids, that didn't sound right. I don't think cooking fluids, that's not a word. That sounded like something from a hospital. How is everybody today? Hey, what's your guys' favorite quote? I don't care if it's funny or motivational, just what is your favorite quick quote? Something that you've heard that's made you think differently. Now, you guys get to watch. You know, I'm super lazy, guys, so that's my and I'm gonna and I don't wanna just squat all day. Maybe I'll squat. Maybe I will. I was gonna I was gonna sit on a bucket like a lazy person, but you guys are all at work, so I won't sit down until you're not at work. Okay. Ooh, money. Mm -hmm. I have. I epoxied a lot of cement countertops. It's pretty common, actually, too. So just such an awesome option so you don't have to ever reseal them or deal with that anymore. So um, I think, like, the most popular thing I ever did, and if you notice, this is going to, we're going to be doing, we'll polish this. This will be brass. Um, but, yeah, I was surprised. So many people used to have me pour copper metallic epoxy over their concrete countertops. And that was probably some of my favorite jobs I ever did. I love doing that stuff. Just that. Learn before you earn. Learn before you earn. There's a good one. Trust the process. I mean, that is not funny, guys. Okay, that was awesome. I love you guys. Tito Say what? Tito? He just said divorce. That's it. Tito? God bless you, man. I, I bet you're going through some shit right now, and I'm actually going to pray for you today, Tito. And let me tell you, Tito, there's also something called Tito's, but that's a good one. But Tito, I'm sorry you're going through that. God bless you. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Dude, I went to an urban warfare training center uh, back when I was young, like 15, 18 years ago, and that's what our urban warfare instructor kept telling us, is slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And I was such an idiot. I was like the young Marine that was like, fast is fast, you idiot. It took me a long time to figure out. They were talking about accuracy, smoothness, like. Um, so you said diarrhea paint. Diarrhea paint. This is, look, diarrhea paint. You guys want to see really quick before I finish this what this is going to finish out to be? Tell me. I'm kind of happy. God bless you, Tito. I'm actually, you know what? Sometimes God removes pieces of shit from your life. It's like God comes down and flushes that toilet for you and your ex just disappears. Uh, I, oh, where's our floor? Come on this way. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to show you guys the brass wall here because this is what we're going to try to get. Very, very polished brass. But if you notice, we left the stempled really bad, like really stempled, so it's only partially polished. Um, but we're going to actually try to flat polish the what we're actually applying today so it should be even smoother and shinier than this so this is actually real metal it is brass there's a the product that we're mixing is about 65 to 70 percent true actual metal brass so it's kind of it's going to be beautiful so but yeah there's no way there's no way though just to to bypass that 
baby poop look in between. The, the intermittent stage of true metal is always mere baby poop. It's horrible. Heather said, when wife gives you lemonade, grab the tequila and call the girls. Hell yeah, that's, I'd just say grab the tequila. Grab the girls and call the tequila. Sorry, I'm just kidding. You remind me of Justin Turner, baseball player. Justin Turner? Is he like a weird ass dude? Justin Turner must be an <laughs> odd mother pricker, dude. Justin Turner. Hey. Do you care if I ask you something really quick? And I want to get to your basement question really quick. But I'm going to steal this really quick because there's about to be a big change over here. Because usually Michael films everything in here. And today Anna's helping Michael because they're doing, they're, I don't know what the hell they're doing. They're doing something super smart. They're going to put a video together. I just come and paint baby shit on stuff and mix weird things. But <laughs> Anna here. Oh, oh, Run. no, don't tell me. But Anna is wearing an awesome shirt. And who made your shirt? Where can they buy the shirt? Um, it's not up yet, but Hustle Gear. It'll be on Hustle Gear. So, and that's who makes a lot of the shirts I've worn too. So that's all. John 316. I love messages with them. I just love that your, so many of your shirts have a good message. So, I'm so scared. She didn't expect me to show. Sorry, Hannah. Good God. At least when they show me, like the camera goes. People um, just try to get through it. Heck yeah. Call our office before too. And then the basement floor, make sure on that basement floor you were talking about, make sure you just mitigate moisture first really quickly. Um, and grind your highs, fill your lows. So any, any high, if it's concrete, you're gonna use a diamond grinder to grind that off. Um, Cause you really, you don't wanna um, have to pour so much product around say a high spot in the concrete. You, you end up wasting a lot of money if, um, if you don't grind that the highs off and then you fill any of your lows with a slurry mixture um, and then you're going to seal your slab and to seal the slab um, you can call the office and we'll go over in great detail all these things this is what I teach every single month and we do have an actual we have two flooring classes coming up I think the next two months is actually um, flooring and outdoor stuff so um, feel free to sign up for a class too if you want to um, they're 349 and it's a lot of days of very hands-on. I, I teach the most hands-on. That's why we are the number one epoxy school in the world, pretty hands down. Um, we have people from all over the world travel to our epoxy classes now for years. We've trained thousands of people. And I can guarantee the main thing, the main reason people come here um, is because we try to give you as much hands-on true experience in the classes as possible and we really dive in deep in every class so no matter whether you're a noob or a really experienced contractor we explain the science of the epoxy what's happening with the exothermic reaction how to expel moisture so it's a really fun um man in the last class that just left i think it was one of the best groups of people and i've, I've said that a few times but i i think partly i'm learning how to teach a little slightly better but man it was the best group of people i've ever worked with so. Um, no, Shelly, actually, it's really catching on. I mean, tons of people are epoxy and stuff, and especially our epoxy. Like, we don't sell, like, a low-grade garage epoxy, so usually if you're wanting garage epoxy, you probably can get... We, we sell some less expensive options, but our main epoxy coats go in kitchens, dining rooms, even in very high-end homes. Um, I mean, look at all my entryways to, to our offices we've had for years now. So it's... I love doing that. Let us know. Call the office too, Shelly, or come to a class for free if you want to do something like that. Call the office and tell them I told you you could have a free class. And same with the guy doing the basement. If you want to call in and if, you, if you're looking to do something and you want to get a little training before you do it, come out to a class um, before you bite something off like that if you want to. We also, we do have really good tech help people that will walk you through the whole thing, but I also don't mind you coming out traveling to Colorado if you want to and we'll go over your exact pattern and what you're doing. Donica, thank you. You're a badass. Thank you, Donica. Did I say your name right, by the way, Donica? Um, thanks for about, thanks for even staying with us. Yeah. 
We really do. We teach. We go over UV exposure, everything. So how to how to seal. I see a lot of um, exothermic problems in the summer or winter, and then you see um, um, it, um, thermal expansion and contraction problems, mostly just due to a lack of knowledge. So, and we see moisture issues, and all it always just comes back to down to a little detailed prep. So if you can just learn the like hard details of how to properly prep, um, you can have great success. I've seen a lot of people even blame it on, you know, all kinds of methods and whatnot. And usually it's just some minor little thing that they needed to tweak. I like your guys' quotes, by the way. You said, who said they saw my growth? Sorry. <laughs> I do that um, to my kids. You know what? This is actually not wood. This is epoxy. This whole table I poured right over MDF, which is medium density fiberboard. Um, this is three sheets of MDF, and I poured a bronze epoxy over the top, and then I poured a bunch of just little tiny accent colors through it, and then I scraped it with my. Sorry, I got an itch on my neck. I need like a professional back scratcher person just to follow me around. Um, and then we scraped it with like a basically like a hair pick tool I made with scissors. I, I just cut up and ruined a good, perfectly good trowel. And um, now we have ourselves a, a wood grained epoxy table that looks like wood. Who, who thinks this does look like wood kind of? And you know what, I'll spray it too. So you, just so you guys can see it for anybody new tuning in right here, just so you can see the actual epoxy. I've sanded it. I sanded it pretty good here so the other day, so it took a lot of the shine off. But here it is with some alcohol on it. And I'm going to be polishing it back up, but I'm going to be polishing it simultaneously with the true metal cop uh, bronze. Brass! Dude, I get better leave. Brass monkey. I better leave, learn my medals. We're in western Colorado in a town called Grand Junction, right on the Utah border. So, um, really beautiful place. Tons of outdoor stuff. Most people come here and they end up coming back multiple times. So come to a class. We feed you really well. And we give you more hands-on training than I guarantee any class you could ever attend anywhere in the world. So, so that, that is what it should look like when we polish it back up, guys. Brass monkey. Hell yeah, Saskatchewan. And do the water work. You want somebody to come up to Saskatchewan and do that? I am to what? Um, I actually am scheduling a um, Canadian trip because I'm doing about probably six to eight jobs depending on some stuff coming up right now in Canada this summer. So anybody that is wanting, and we're gonna, I'm going to do a U.S. tour as well. And I'm looking to do some kind of higher end stuff and bring a film crew or, or some stuff to come and film and um, take pictures afterwards. And I try to do that in the summers a lot of times to just build our portfolio as a company. So if anybody wants to get on my summer schedule, call the office, the link is above. And like I say, I'm gonna be in probably within two to three months, I'm gonna be doing quite a few jobs up in Canada already. So let me know, I'll stop by to your place as well. So. Um, the, home of Hello Bill. the home of the Hello Bill. Buffalo Bill. Oh, Buffalo Bill, is that because of my beard? No. Oh, is Junction the home of Buffalo Bill? I do not know, guys. They, they the Buffalo Bill to the college students, right? I do not know. Shows you how much I know. I know um, Doc Holliday's grave is up, supposedly. Oh, yeah. It may have washed down the stream, and now they just have you go look at a little spot that doesn't exist, but supposedly it's Doc Holliday's grave. So, open your huckleberry. Come to a class, and paint baby crap and polish it with me. So, should be my tagline. Polishing baby turds. This is so disgusting. Looking, and then when you hit it with that polisher, it's crazy how it just starts gleaming. That brass color comes out across here, so. And now, all we did for this edge pattern is we, we sandwiched two sheets of MDF, and that's what this is built out of, is two sheets of MDF, and then I took a Sawzall and just cut through down here, and it was crazy. A class, um, a bunch of students did the majority of this table. So, um, very little work of mine. All I'm trying to do is not let my, the class down that left and hopefully finish the table out that they actually built as an awesome team. 
And I want to finish this out and make sure I'm not totally screwing it up for them so they can come back and check it out in their next class. Um, yeah, something like this could be, but we'd spray a urethane top coat to it. So um, just to really add that extra per, uh, layer of UV protection. So we live in a really high UV index area. So, and I've had, I had a, just my regular epoxy on a table outside um, for about seven years. Um, and I let snow land on it. I purposely let it snow and ice land on it every winter. Um, left it in the sun, everything, never put it in. And then about seven years, I got a little bit of cracking and chipping around the edge, which is funny because I'd poured over it because it, it was a brand new tile um, table that I'd bought from Home Depot that had failed within like two months. So, well, there's the, that's the first bar cage. And now I'm going to go down my other side now. And I think I'm going to try something a little different on this side. I'm going to try to be organized here and scoop a blob out and then scrape it down the side here so I know how much product I have to cover this side. And I do have more. I'm going to go probably mix more if I need it. But. How's everyone doing today? What's your guys, what is your blessing? One word, name a, name a one word blessing that you guys received today, something you're grateful for. Mine is kids. Daughter, what an awesome answer. Whoever said daughter, badass. Good person there. Steak. steak, okay, that's not quite on the level with daughter, but that's freaking up there if you said steak. I do have a fridge here at the office with about 250 pounds of Cedar River Farms double bone in ribeye. Oh, no. I'm scraping this up. We're using that. You know, you never recognize, people don't realize just how fortunate they are with their health until they lose it. So I've actually been injured pretty bad a few times and been in ICU and had a pulmonary embolism and after a bad accident. And that is when you start really wishing you'd have cared about your health. Mine, I cared about my health, but I also love motorcycles. So. What is this? What did somebody say? Somebody said nothing. Somebody said nothing. You know what? Whoever said nothing, Count your blessings and just imagine if the only things you had tomorrow when you woke up were the things you said thank you God for today. And, and when I've thought of it in those terms, and also I've been really blessed to travel the world quite a bit and I've seen a lot. And the one thing I keep seeing, the more of the world I've seen, is that we are so blessed. And yet, especially in America, if you live in America, you have way more than you need. We, we, we have a bunch of needs that are really just wants. You go to the rest of the world, most people don't own a pair of shoes. They're lucky if they get any clean drinking water. So I think we're very blessed. And I would hate to only wake up tomorrow with what I was grateful for today, because even in my most grateful days, I think I really have a, probably a, a lack of understanding sometimes of just how blessed I really was. Sorry, there's my dumb rant about gratefulness. That's some dumbass that said nothing. What is this? Okay, guys, this is not, I'm not saying this is how you should do it. This is my test phase right here because I have only applied like for a bark pattern um, the other side of the table. <laughs> so this is all new to me too, doing the, a rough edge. And I kind of like how that roller's applying this even better than the brush, to be honest. I can say that as a, very easy for, I'm gonna probably roll over what I did on the other side. Try to unfornicate my earlier work. Um, Sarah says just finished pouring a floor with the epoxy we got from you guys. Sarah. Like and, my husband. and what did she do? She's like my me and my husband. Dude, good job, Sarah, you badass. Thanks for coming on the page. Send pictures, definitely put that in the um, diamond coat group too, so. And, um, yeah, thank you. Send, I'd love to see pictures. Some reason, Bob Ross. Because I'm being sweet, guys. That's why I remind you of Bob Ross. Because I'm nervous. Whenever I know that people are watching, I get, I don't know, I'm not very good in front of people. So I get kind of nervous and then I get quiet. But if you guys, like I always say, if you guys were in the, 
going 65 in like the fast lane in front of me and it's supposed to be 75 and you're just blocking me and I'm trying to pass and he won't let me by. Hmm. That Bob Ross voice turns into Bill Burr. And I start, I start thinking violent thoughts. I start wondering how that bumper on the front of my truck's gonna do. A squirrel from my beard. You know what? I don't think a squirrel in my beard would be good. It probably wouldn't be good for the squirrel because I never have nuts in my beard, so the squirrel would be hungry all the time. You did a wood burn? That's awesome. I love wood burning. This is actually just epoxy. It's not a real wood grain. I just epoxied it directly over the top of a um, double stacked um, table made out of MDF. So. I just want this very level, very even. I don't want like a high point in it. So I am rolling this back and forth and kind of cross rolling it till I get a pretty even tap because I'm going to scrape down it with my trowel as well. But I don't want to have a bunch of excess that's coming off in areas. So just take your time, guys. This is a lot of, a lot of times I believe my impatience, just trying to pour it and, and quit and not really massage it into place is what causes all the little detailed work you end up getting stuck doing the next day. So remember, it's going to be so much easier if you just stop right now while well, this is all soft and fresh and work it as much as you need to. So the product has a really good work time, so you should be just fine no matter how long you take. And this is Friday, so it's going to cure up and get rock hard this weekend. And then we're going to be polishing this and showing you this turn into brass. This is going to be amazingly shiny edge of kind of a bark, a true, a true metal edge pattern or whatever you want to call it, live edge. You know what? Call our office and go over some of the details and we'll try to talk to you about maybe where you're putting them, how, how you're prepping the bottom. Um, I will tell you this guys, there's a lot of other brands out there that during COVID, um, pre-COVID a major company tried to purchase us and we turned it down because they were basically going to screw our recipe. But they did purchase 12 other companies and um, all 12 of those companies are still branding like they are still owned privately by themselves. But they're actually all owned by a very major parent corporation called Polytech and that's a almost a $2 billion company now. I think it's actually over $2 billion now in value. So just a massive company. And they when they, I was the very first epoxy company that they approached my countertop epoxy and diamond coat to purchase and they offered us a ton of money. Um, but the, the one thing, they had really bad recipes of epoxy, but they had a really good profit margin and they were going to offer like parent equity in the company so that if you screwed up people's jobs because you sold them cheap epoxy and they went to one of your competitors, um, there was some kind of like offset program they talked about working with us and I just thought that was so criminally shady so we didn't do it but um, a lot of companies i can tell you and i won't name names have done that and all the top 12 known epoxy companies except countertop and diamond coat which is ours have almost all sold out to them and the ones that haven't are a lot of them are buying their resin from them and it's actually a really cheap low grade art resin that they're switching out to with most of these companies so you, and I knew they were going to have a lot of sh shrink back problems and stuff like that, color stability problems, bonding issues, because they just refused to put the money into the mix. So we are countertop epoxy. There's nothing better than countertop epoxy. We're diamond coat and countertop epoxy, and we do have the highest grade epoxy in the world. So it's not the cheapest, but it is the best. If you're trying to do a job that you want to last for a long time. This is generally the product you use. So, okay, man. Now for my attempt to do like a final polishing, I guess. 
of this and burnish this in and get it smoother. You know, I might roll this side though, just to get a really even tack like that side too. I think I am, yeah, oh man, that is so much nicer to roll than brush. Levi, Levi, see, I just learned something with you guys. I always do, if I pay attention. Project if possible, if you guys could tell me, what do you want to see me work on next week in a live? Tell me, what do you guys want to see built next week in a live? Okay. I really want to start working more for you guys. Say what? Um, she said, I'm sorry, I meant to say stone coat. Oh, stone coat? Um, they did sell and we didn't, so that's all I'm going to say. I try not to badmouth other companies or, or anything like that because we're very successful because we've spent our time really working on quality. And I know a lot of companies haven't really had that perspective, the, that, that desire to worry about quality over profit, but it's really worked out for us. And I really believe that if you target quality first, you'll always end up making whatever you need to. And being rich isn't being rich always. Dr. Shelley said, how did you choose the Florida River? You know what, call our company and we'll work with you. If you're doing a lot of epoxy countertops, we'll set you up and get you, it, depending on your volume and whatnot, we have a lot of um, distributor programs and whatnot that we'll work with you on and dealerships and stuff. Ask to speak to Jo Beth, she's a badass and she's in charge of our um, dealership programs and territories and she'll find out where you are and find a way to work you in. And you're welcome to always come out to training too if you want to. So remember we do do a class once a month here. We usually specialize in one specific thing um, last year, um, last, last year, last week, it was um, countertops, which is this why they built this table right here, the class did. Um, and um, next class in three weeks, I believe, we're going to be going over um, kind of advanced floor prep, how to deal with um, subfloors, moisture, going over tile, stuff like that. So. Uh, they said, what's the cure time and max working time? Um, the maximum working time is very um, temperature dependent, but um, like our countertop product um, in class the other day, we had everybody mix. We got our product up to about 80 degrees. We poured it out. We didn't torch it. We did mix our accents and then we did a two hour lunch break and then we came back. So after two hours, we came back, we finished our, all our pieces without touching them for two hours and we were still able to torch them, get them really nice and flat and get all our veining and everything done. So as far as work time, it's amazing. That's also why, because we kind of have a slow, really pure cure that doesn't have any solvents in it. And that's sort of our trick to our, um, why we're so scratch resistant and color stable. So a lot of the other attributes are really just because of that really pure mix. So. And they want you to make a big American flag table. Big American flag table. You know what, I have a big American flag table right on the other side of this wall and I'll show you guys in a minute, so. Dude, that sounds, you guys want to see something about vanity? I'm, what is this? I don't know. It's like a weird, what do you call that table that I just poured? I just sprayed, I just sprayed a table with spray paint. So you guys can probably just mock me. I would, I'm okay with it, but I can't wait for you guys to see what I did and we'll see if it, see what you guys think of it. Now let me set my roller and brush down. You know what? Let's look it up. Let's look it up. Rush it all. Let's let's look it up for her, and we'll try to do that table. So that sounds like a really awesome. I like that. I love when you guys give me like good ideas and stuff. So thank you. What is our website? And if you can't find it, the link is in the bio. Hit that follow button, and thank you guys so much for all the likes. I really appreciate it. You guys are very supportive. I can't believe I have such a supportive live audience here of our little company. So, so thanks for not selling out. And where are the training is in Grand Junction, Colorado, which is Western Colorado. Fly right into here. Don't fly to Denver and then drive over unless you want to drive. Um, it's really beautiful just right here. And we have hotels, car rentals, everything here. Um, you sign up in links in the bio above. And, um, it's just under um, training and classes. So, um, yeah, please sign up and we'll see you at a class soon.
I'm just trying to do a, a kind of a nice swiping effect here so that when I come back and I hit this top edge of this supposed bark that I'm trying to create, it'll actually, I want it to burnish pretty darn smooth. So I'm using my tiny little Venetian trowel here. Brass monkey. Dun, 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 dun. It says brass, by the way, guys. Beastie Boys? Who sings? Is it Beastie Boys? I can't. Who sings Brass Monkey? So one of y'all knows who sings Brass Monkey. I can't, can't remember. For the life of me, I can't remember. I'm getting old. All right, I'm almost done, guys. Sorry I'm boring the audience probably to death here. So let me. Beastie Boys. Sabotage. There's the old Beastie Boys song. Sa Sabotage was the song. Which movie? Oh, Easy A? I don't think I've seen that. Easy A? Yeah. Oh, what's A stand for? Ass? Sorry guys, my staff is talking and it's, they're all way cooler than me, so I don't know what. I just had that song in my head. Now I want to see, and I want to see that China door. I want to, I want to see this door. China, Russian doll. What did I call it? China door? No, definitely not. We actually have the most non-hazardous epoxy that's commonly sold around the world. So we spent a lot of time and a lot of our personal company's money manufacturing a very healthy resin. So this, we actually, most resins, here's another thing I've learned over, you know, fighting with environmental agencies and whatnot, is the environmental agencies, like the EPA, do not protect you at all. Sorry, if you work for the EPA, they don't. Um, they allow a 3% very harmful um, carcinogenic chemicals to be added to supposed zero VOC products and still advertise them as if they're zero VOC, which it should be criminal to do that. So when you buy our products. You do beautiful work. Wow. Thank you. I appreciate that, guys. I just want this to be smooth when we trial it out. Yeah. Surfboards? We I actually did a surfboard like what a year ago, and I mean it bonded, but went, and it worked really well. But it, and I've been told by most guys that have done it that it works amazingly. But I'll just tell you this: I actually used to surf. And I am so much not a surfboard building expert that I would hate to speak for some attribute I don't know for, but I just know as far as a resin, this is so much higher quality than most of the resins that are being used in like all those types of industries. So. Um, how likely is the epoxy to work after being stored for a year? Just fine. If you have a year old epoxy, um, just make sure that it's not crystallized or anything and you should be just fine. So we do a one year shelf life, but that's just more for a warranty. So because we can't control how people store it and whatnot, but I've used like seven year old epoxy of ours. So I can't speak for all other brands, but our, our epoxy definitely lasts very well for much, way more than a year. The next live, I think we might be going live this afternoon again, so I hope you guys join us for that. And um, what time is it right now, actually, here? Yeah, so probably in about three or four hours we'll be going live one more time today. So, all right, man, we're getting this, actually. I think we're getting it to lay down okay today. And the glove, it seems to be the easiest way to get that, that rough chiseled edge to slide in so I can polish it a little smoother on Monday. 
Um, what I'm, our countertop epoxy is, but what I'm troweling right now is not, because this is our true metal product that we like to be able to trowel or roll directly into a single spot wherever we want to. Oh, look at that, guys. Yeah, I know it looks like baby crap now, but this is all going to polish into a beautiful, beautiful bronze. So. They really see say what? They want to see your American I will show you guys the American flag table in just one second. I'm going to show you all our tables. We have a lot of stuff here built by students, really fun projects. And I'll walk you guys around the office here in one second and show you some of that. We have a big American flag table and probably going to change the quote on it. I don't think anybody else ever understood it, so. Put a Bible verse or something more important out. Ah, don't trip. Um, the edge coat is a product we use, and it's a very um, thin viscosity, very porous water-based coating that we put on to prime your edges, especially if you have like really weird color, like say you're going from a orange countertop and you're gonna completely change your color from orange to say white or white marble or something. That's where edge coat comes in really nice. So you can, um, that's when edge coat comes in really nice and you'll paint like the top one inch of the from the edge and then just the edge. And then if epoxy pours and flows a little too thin, people sometimes people roll it too thin or overly torch it or something to where it like pours off. And that's when edge coat will still really hide and you don't see that major color transition. But I'm kind of, I, I personally, I will be honest, I don't use edge coat very often, but I know how to pour epoxy a little bit hotter than some people do. So I usually keep my edges pretty clean. Did we have anybody here that to help him? Yeah. I'm just wanting to ease this edge. I don't want to have a lip that I have to stand off on Monday. I would rather it just break over really naturally. So right now, I'm trying to just finger the edge into place. Okay, I think that's going to be a clean, clean countertop right there. Um, I'm going to peel both of these tapes, but one thing you'll realize probably after I peel it is one of these tapes is just masking this simple frog tape like this, but inside that masking, like closer towards the edge rather, is our wire pull tape. So I wanted to see just how cured I could get the true metal and still be able to pull a really accurate edge. And this is the same exact product you'd pull like um, along bed liners, like truck bed liners and whatnot. If you do pull it while your product's wet, remember you'll still be able to do a cleanup, an easy cleanup. So now I'm gonna show you that table and we're gonna trowel a few stencils on another really pretty piece we have. But it's a, it's a completed table. Well, it's a door, but I'm going to do it like a table. So, and I know it's matte black and very reflective, so you might not be able to see it very well. But here is our here is our almost tipped my picture over on me. Here's our American flag table. A class actually built this too. This is just six sheets of MDF because we wanted to stack it a little thicker for our boardroom than a normal table. Um, we just glue and screw each sheet one on top of the other and then we um, poured a copper and charcoal base layer and then we uh, applied the stenciling to it, just soap set it. I'm not that good at vinyl stenciling so I just did it with soap and water. Um, let it dry for I think a day, about 24 hours and then we just poured a clear over the top. And if you notice it's not really shiny, that's because we sanded it with 400 and 800. I do this to a lot of stuff I do. It takes the sheen off and it looks so much more beautiful. Really damage resistant, clean, super easy. Really, really smooth to the touch. Um, a table like this, you know, probably about five, ten thousand dollars It totally depends on where, how, how complex the table is, shipping, or if we can build it on site. So we're very open to that. And we are um, getting ready to do our summer tour here shortly. So remember that, guys. If you have a project you want worked on, this is the time to try to get on my schedule. So 
And I'm going to take you over here to this door, this white door with stenciling on it. And I'm going to try, I hope I have enough left over that I can still do some really thin stuff. I probably have to mix more. Okay. This is inspired by a lady named um, like Victor, Victor Schaefer or something, and really amazing artist, just way better than us, than me at spray painting. So I'm kind of embarrassed, and I hope Vicki Schaefer doesn't see this, because she's way better at this than I am. But I saw a lot of her work, and it's incredible. And I thought, why don't I try to copy what a really good artist does? So I think I got my rainbow pattern backwards, or whatever, of the blues, and I put a weird light blue in the middle. but. We're trying to do some stuff to set on our ocean pour floor that's going to kind of go along with it. And then I'll probably pour a dirty pour a turquoise top with a bunch of weird light blues and turquoises, but we'll see. So now I will do a little bit of stenciling with y'all. And I hope I don't have to mix, but I may have to mix a little bit. I'm going to put a glove on. And I want you guys to pick the stencil. Um, and I'm just going to give these an order. This is a flower pattern here, and you might want to see it so this would be number one this is and they're all repeating patterns this is a i have no idea clue whatever that pattern is looks kind of cool chicks dig it um this pattern honeycomb just badass i don't know why i love honeycomb patterns and that's what we did on our other wall and then we have kind of a neat um floral pattern here that is repeating as well and i'm going to be doing probably a stripe or half of this door and I'm going to try to stencil it out um, on here just to let you guys know. So let me know one, two, three, or four. So remember the floral is four, three is honeycombs, two is the pointy little, I don't know, and here's the starfish flowers. Two for four. Two for four? I like that idea. I like it. I like it. I like it. I will mix myself a little bit of true metal then, and we'll head right on to number four unless before I'm done mixing here in the next 30 seconds, somebody may, um, you might outvote the people that said number four, but if you don't, that's what we're gonna be pouring. Dang it, where's my sticks? There we are. Anybody have cool plans this weekend? Anything fun planned? Okay, this is my resin hardener and I flatten it out in the bottom of the pail and then I cut it up like a cake so I can kind of get my ratios for like a half or a quarter kit and um, makes it pretty simple because I don't like to mix a whole kit and then have it all setting up on you because if you don't need it save it for tomorrow or next month so here we are there's my Pouring an art school? school? Pouring your school, badass, like Stacy. Yeah. Good job. Um, Pouring your school, I like to hear that. I did the countertops at my kid's school. That was kind of fun. Somebody said, yeah, my cool plans are sitting in a weekend jail. LOL. Sitting where? In a weekend jail. I hope you don't have to spend a week in jail. And if you do, weekend in jail if you are spending the weekend in jail when you're laying there and just things are going rough and your big cellmates like lay down let me feed you breakfast think about my life and think about epoxy and what peace this brought you so your cellmate might be beating your face in and doing things to you and you might have a sexual relationship against your will but remember epoxy was amazing and when you get out of jail i'll still be here doing lives just for you and we'll dedicate it to you i'll do a piece for you We'll call it jailbreak or something. Freedom bird. Maybe we'll ask for your bail money on the live and see who will bail you out. But we have to see what you're in jail for first. No, you don't have to tell us. I'll just pray for you that you're blessed, whatever you do. So. If you need a prayer, I will pray for you. But I don't go to church to do it because I hate church. I think they're a bunch of Satan worshipers that touch kids. So... I do believe in God and Jesus. That's my guy. It said he's going to go. Said, God bless you. Dude, God bless you, man. 
And I hope you have a, the best possible weekend you can. But just remember, if it's a bad weekend and you're having that weird relationship, you're working out three times a day, you read five books, you have sex, and you still don't like your life, and you re realize it's because you're in jail, just think, I will still support you. Levi here, he'll still worry about you, pray for you, and I'll do sample pieces for you once a week till you're out. Everybody does need prayers. Okay, floral it was. I think this is still the winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, I don't know, guys. I'm kind of torn on exactly what pattern to do here, but this is a repeating pattern, and I, I don't know if I should do an angle for a vertical door. A, a We were going to do an angle of the other ones, but I don't know if the floral will look good on an angle. What do you guys think? Should I, should I do like a 45 and just try to do like half the door? with flowers at an angle, or should I do them straight? You tell me. I'm going to grab a roller and pretend I'm grabbing a roller, but really I'm going pee, and I'll be right back. Smart. Don't hear that. I don't know. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. <laughs> Intermission. <laughs> oh, angle. Let's see. I'm trying to see how, like, could you do it like this and then just fill in, like, yeah, you know, and I not, totally you don't like have to do angled. it. Yeah. Then and if you don't, you don't do. have to do it like up to there, yeah. you know, so it's more like natural. For now. And you could do it this way. That would be kind of cool too. Microphone, but I did take it off. I did not bring you guys in the bathroom. Oh, I oh, unplugged you too. <laughs> off, so you guys didn't have to use a restroom with me. So, see how quick I was. They all want you to do the angle. The angle? Yeah. The angle. Check the angle of the dangle, yo. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm gonna surely mess this up. You oh, you know what? Hold up. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Hold up, hey, everybody that be thinking you soft. A Versace? I don't think I did. Maybe a Liberace. I don't know. You did uh, Vera Wang. Vera Wang. I did, I did Gingy Wang. That's what I did. I did the Ginger Wang pattern. Moms around the world ask for it. Uh, I, I think it's good enough, but dude, you're talking to the guy that's, uh, I am not, this is something we're doing with you guys. This whole True Metal, I've proved that our new product really does work amazingly, but let's be real, I'm not the most experienced, amazing applicator. So this is, these are the lives that are made just for you guys, so you can talk shit. No, you can. I'm just saying you guys are welcome to Somebody out there, somebody on this live is better at everything I do than me, probably. So we're here for your opinions, your ideas, if they're, if they're sweet. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use a little flat board here as my painting backer. And then I can use it kind of as a roller pan so I can get this metal nice and flat on the roller. Because remember, this is brass. This is going to be a very highly polished brass piece here in a minute so well not a minute like a minute on monday so i believe i'm gonna go home and do something else this weekend then work okay so there's my pile and i probably should roll it out here get it a little thinner on my brush on my roller dude who's our guy down in mexico right now I gotta do a shout out to this guy. Who's our? L Company. L Company. I thought I found somebody stealing our stuff last night. I found all our videos on another page. And dude, then I start realizing who he was. He is such a badass dude. He has such a good page. How do you say his name? El Compa Nieten. El Compa Nieten. And it's all in Spanish. He translates tons of amazing instructions. It's a lot of stuff off our page, but he also has a lot of his own really good work. So check out his page and. Um, support a badass young guy that has an awesome family and he is like he is hustling and working hard and he does a really good job on a lot of his instructional stuff and it's fun to see what he's doing so 
um, black. The one we were working on, all we did was black, and we sprayed a bunch of um, uh, shimmer gold and um, light turquoise on top. A little bit of trans. Say what? I think the brass is going to look banging, right, guys? Look at this. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to love this. Okay, dude. I'm in a store yesterday looking for bolts on this weird guy. I'm in a little town, Fruta, Colorado. It's a very hillbilly. Their, like, their yearly event that everybody comes out to is called Mike the Headless Chicken, so you can kind of figure out what kind of town Fruta is. And there's a dude, you know, well, that didn't work at all, did it now? So and there's this dude <laughs> getting bolts on the other side of the aisle from me, and he made some of the weirdest noises I've ever heard. He was like, mm, mm. So I don't know if he was like struggling with a turd or what he was doing, but it literally got me half concerned that he was okay. So, oh shit, shit. Get your damn hands off it, Michael. No, I'm kidding, sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. Sorry. You're a badass. That thing will go right on top of that thing. No, we're just being cute weird. Is this it? it? I don't think so. It doesn't? Uh-uh. It doesn't match up over here. Uh, I think. See, oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Hey, that is it. <laughs> yeah. You make me so horny. Sorry. Oh, my God. I love when things work out right. This is going to be, that's going to be hot. I'm at work. I'm sorry. And I'm on live. I've had my live counsel, but it was for offensive things. Right now, I'm just being myself. That's not offensive at all. Jamie, but I live just outside of Fruit of Colorado. Fruit of Colorado? Where do you live, Jamie? What a badass. She lives in a nice town. Right outside of Michael's name and the names of the town. I am going to polish it, and it'll be a really highly polished bronze. So if I do, if I do it correctly, guys, remember, half of what I do. Jamie from Loma, come out to a class, Jamie. So we have, we're right here in Grand Junction, Colorado, so we hardly ever even get locals. We'll have, we've had some classes where we don't have a single person, even local, and everybody else is from, like, either other countries or the other side of the U.S. or Canada. Or I mean, a lot of classes we'll have Africa to all kinds of um, East Asia countries and Colombia, last class, yeah. Um, Tina said, oh, my lanta. Yeah, Tina said, oh, my lanta, <laughs> Tina. Tina. <laughs> Tina, you sound really sweet. We had a girl who worked in here, her name was Tina. She was not sweet. She's like, you, you just made up for her. She, like, she was one of those people that almost ruined a name until you came on and just said that. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I apologize. The link is in the bio. And don't pay. Just call them and tell them you're local and that Levi told you on the live you could have a class. So. But only come if you want to have fun working with epoxy and mixing. And, and you might want to watch the rest of this live and decide if you want to be offended by me or not. Because sometimes I, my jokes are stupid. My... I'm not hating it, guys, are you? What do y'all think? Dude, apparently, this is way TMI, but apparently I worked out this morning and I might have to, me and my shower might have to have a nooner together. Good God. Apparently. Ah! What's that? What? He's scared. See, Michael, Michael likes to scare me over here, guys. It makes me think I'm a failure all the time. He's like, look at that. Levi, it looks just like your face. What? That was so mean. Mm -hmm. Just remember, guys, sometimes you guys don't like what I do, but I can guarantee your moms do. If, if you're young and you're talking crap, I will come and make you my, I'll be your stepdad. Don't be. I'm trying. I hope we. Pol I hope I polish this without like grinding into my door. 
I think it's gonna look banging ass beautiful. It's gonna be amazing. Every once in a while, some of the stuff I do works out. I'm like Bob Ross mixed with Joe Dirt. <laughs> mixed if 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 Bob Ross if Bob Ross, Joe Dirt, and Bill Burr had a kid. Yeah, uh huh. Bench warmers? I watched it for the first time. Bench warmers? A good one. Oh, man. And I was like hearing familiar stuff and I was like, wait a minute. I feel like Levi said stuff from this movie. I probably do. I'm a. Ah! Levy. Mitch said, awesome concept. My brain is on overload for the possibilities of this. Dude, Mitch, right? But like, then again, my brain's just. I don't know if it's loading or overloading. Do we just leave the stripe? I don't know, guys. What do you think about just leaving a stripe? That's pretty popping, guys. I don't know. Do you think we just leave it there? I, I say yes. Okay, well, holy shit, guys. We have a whole bunch of... I got a bunch of brass left over, and I ain't wasting that because that's literally like probably 100 bucks sitting there. So what are we going to trial, bro? Do you know what we're trialing it on? Mm, mama. You guys are going to love this. This is hot. It's gonna be hot. You guys are gonna like this so much. You guys are gonna lose your shit. So, back to my stupid ocean table that I was gonna do a dirty pour, but you know what? I'll probably do an ugly dirty pour anyways. It probably would have turned out like shit. So, why don't I just do this? And... Sorry. There we are. There's my spray paint table. Don't make fun of me guys. I did work hard at this. It cost me at least seven dollars worth of spray paint to make it look that kind of weird. But I like it. All right. I'm about to... This will be the first all brass countertop we had. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Sorry. Nobody's mom's here to Help me dry my fingers off. Oh, yeah. It's Friday. I get more and more offensive and weird. And my jokes aren't good either. My dad jokes. I don't even have dad jokes because they're inappropriate for kids. The scent of what? The scent of raccoons? Sent us raccoons. Oh, somebody sent us raccoons. I thought this was like Mike D and the boys. Like, why does it smell like somebody birthed raccoons in here? Remember if anybody's ever seen the other guys. Okay. Thank you for all the likes. Please don't, please stop hitting the like button when you're looking at my tits. My face is up here. Oh, good. Oh, Hustle Gear Co. Most badass shirt company in the world. Dr. Epoxy. Like Dr. Dre. Doctor, doctor, I'm trying. At work. I'm at work, but I can barely get my gloves on. I am trying, guys. I am trying to just bring you guys quality. And, ooh. Now, remember, guys, nothing shit on my table. This is brass true metal. It does look sus. It looks like the party went real bad. Funny, but talented. The talent is limited. So is the humor. It is about like peanut butter. It's like a creamy peanut butter. Yeah, and it will polish to a real bright brass true metal. So it's going to be very shiny when we polish it. <laughs> now my, now my stupid board just wastes epoxy. So I got to scrape it all back off. Remember, if you ever make a mess with epoxy, especially we have a pretty easy to apply epoxy. Um, remember, if you ever do have a kind of a nasty mess going on, just stop and clean it up with a little bit of alcohol. You should have plenty of time to get any surface clean, get all that epoxy off, and then continue back on to working. So, um, 
like three different resins that, of recipes that we kind of mixed um, in our lab and mixed with actual brass particles as well. So somebody did eat Taco Bell and they showed up here and I'm just trying to get it like rolled out. I'm just trying to get this sort of, I want to try starting to roll it now. Obviously that's, if I find my little trowel, a little midget trowel that I had over around here somewhere. Right here on the edge of the table. I'll trowel it out into place and then smooth it out. It's really fun, guys. You, too, could come to a class and be satisfied by epoxy. If you can't satisfy your woman, start doing epoxy. At least she'll like the pretty stuff you leave around. If, you, if your jokes suck, get better at epoxy. That's all I do every day. Until till my stand-ups gets ready. I'm just going to have to stay good at epoxy because right now I don't think anybody would pay me to go do comedy. And if they did, they'd quickly kick me out of the club. I, I used to have to do, present certain things when I was in the Marine Corps just every once in a while. I, I did one job that sometimes I'd, I'd have to make an announcement to our unit. And, I was told by the colonel one time that I was the only Marine he knew that could make a room full of like 600 Marines blush. I don't think I was very PC back then. I would have so been counseled back then. If you guys think I'd be counseled now, I would have really been counseled back then. Okay. Thank you guys. You know, thanks. thank you taxpayers for allowing me to serve my country. Um, and just be a young, not super directed young man that was very big. Ah, look at that. Don't do like I do, kids. Yeah, thank you. I was a very undirected young man. I, I was very intense. I worked really hard. I, my first job right before that, I was logging hard timber in Michigan. And I was like, man, this is not as fun as I thought it would be. <laughs> you know, I like the work. I just decided I was, logging was, a, for me, mentally, it was extremely tough because the crew I was around was probably some of the dirtiest people I'd ever met, and just nasty mothers, and way, way grosser than the Marines I worked with. And um, it was kind of actually tough to work in that environment every day as a young kid. I think I knocked somebody out on the crew within like, I don't even know, like three to five weeks of being there. Ooh, get this debris out. We don't want that happening. How is everyone today? Hope you all are blessed. Hopefully, if, if I bored you guys to death, something much more exciting will happen today. And this, I just want to um, kind of flatten this with my trowel as much as I can right now so that um, when I come back and sand it, I don't have a bunch of striations to try to sand and level. So. It's just so much easier if you can do some of this work with your trowel. And if you notice, I try to keep really smooth, long strokes. Yeah, uh -huh, that's exactly what I said. And um, that's mostly just so that you don't have chatter marks and whatnot. I see a lot of people try to be really slow and accurate, but it's actually kind of hard to slow down too much and not have kind of a wavy pattern. So don't move too quick, but remember, if you move a little faster, it's almost like a boat. Your trowel goes up on plane and um, really really glides and it'd be better to have to hit and burnish an area a few times to get it down to the flat level texture you're looking than try to make one swoop pass anyways you're just so much like more likely to get it correct so black base and neon we will do it i'll try i'll see what we have today and i'll try to do that for the live this afternoon so black base and neon colors that's a good that's a good one i like that What should 
can I do here? I do not know how to, I'm not sure how I should finish this edge, but I think this is how I'm finishing it. Oh, that's gonna be so fun for me to try to work into all those little cracks and corners while I polish this. Remember guys, I am having to try to remind people that usually people try to schedule my summer too late. So if anybody wants me to come and personally bid on a job to do and have a film crew there or anything and do something a little higher end or more meticulous, decorative, uh, make sure you schedule me soon. So, because my summer trip um, work schedule is filling up. So, um, and I'll be in Canada and all across the US. So probably all of Canada and all of the US, so. Okay, this is I wish I could like cook this so much that it was hard this afternoon. I might actually try to put a heat lamp on it, but I highly doubt that I could, um, highly doubt that it would be cured enough for me to actually polish this afternoon, but I may try. All I'm trying to do is guarantee a even coverage of product right now. So I'm kind of cross rolling just so I can Pick product up where it's thicker, make sure it's nice and thick where any little thin spots are filled in. No little voids because it's going to look ugly if you polish it up and have a little void right back to my spray paint. This is my, this is my idea of an art piece. So. Thank you everybody. I have not. Crow Creek and Jess what? I have not looked them up, but I'll take a look at that. I appreciate that. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for the likes. Please hit that follow button. It does a lot for us. We're a small company and we can't afford to do huge traditional marketing budgets like we used to. So we like to just communicate. And the one thing I like is I love to be able to actually personally communicate with my customers on here and see exactly what you guys want, like, and need so I can actually solve your problems. Oh, I'm doing that. Mm-hmm. Watch this, guys. I'm going to do a partial. That's going to be... That is going to be money. Okay, I want it kind of rough and textured right now. And I'm going to take and scrape off my trowel so it's really nice and clean and flat because I'm just going to knock down only the highs here if I can. That's going to look clean. Where do you get this product? This is Countertop Epoxy's True Metal. So you can go right up the links in the bio. Anything we do in this class, you can actually purchase right from us. We manufacture all our products out of Wisconsin. And we do all our classes. I, I live in Grand Junction, Colorado. So that's where we have our main office. And that's where we teach our classes and everything. So if you would leave it the way it is, will it flap itself out? 
no, this here is not a self-leveling product. So this is meant to be trialed on like a ceiling to just about anything. So I think that'll look pretty clean. I don't know if you guys can see that I kind of skipped some parts and hit some parts. And now I'm gonna do a little quick cleanup. And thank you guys so much for joining the live today. I hope you guys learned something and enjoyed it. I know that I have some black base with neon colors. Black base and neon colors. I'll try to have that ready for this afternoon to do. Don't be mad if I don't find it, but I think I can probably pull that together and do that for you. So, and um, remember, call our office if you have any specific questions. And always clean your tools up. These little expensive trowels add up, and you can just so easily clean them with alcohol right after you get done work. And so thanks for all the likes. Please hit that follow button. God bless you. Kill a pedophile. And I'll see you this afternoon.